Say you're doing a job for a client. You've done your nice render and it's all looking really good. And because it cycles, it's taking you like three days to render it. And then the client comes back to you and says, oh yeah, yeah, that's looking really good. But can we change that blue sphere and make it pink? And you're like, oh man, another three days of rendering. Uh, but if you'd use render passes, you may be able to fix this in compositing. And I know personally, uh, I don't think there's been a professional job where I, that I've done where I haven't used render passes for the final renders. And you know, even if half the time the compositors don't even use them, when you do need them, they're an absolute lifesaver. So I'm gonna show you today uh, all the different render passes that Blender provides, um, how you can recombine them to recreate your main render, and also some kind of use cases of why you would even want to use them. So let's get into it. So in Blender, you just wanna make sure that you're using the Cycles render engine. Eevee does have a couple of passes you can use, but the majority of them are uh, part of Cycles. And then all you need to do is go into the view layer settings here, this little uh, image icon, and here's all of the different passes that you can enable. So the main ones we're gonna be talking about are the ones here under the light section. And you'll see you have a bunch of different kind of categories here. We've got diffuse, glossy, transmission, subsurface, volume, and then there's a couple other checkboxes here. Now a diffuse pass is just the diffuse kind of lighting. So kind of your base color, uh, your base shading without any reflections or transparency or anything like that. Your glossy pass is essentially all of your reflections, including your specular highlights, which are essentially, you know, reflections of lights. Uh, so transmission is all of your transparency information. So any transparent objects will show up in here. Subsurface is your subsurface scattering. Uh, any objects that you have subsurface scattering enabled on will show up in this pass. Volume is your volumetrics pass, so any kind of lights and fog and volumetric effects that you have enabled in your scene will show up in this pass. And then you have um, emission, which is any kind of objects that are emitting light will show up here. Uh, environment is your environment texture, like your world uh, environment texture, like HDR or something like that might, would go in this pass. And then you've got shadow and ambient occlusion, which are mainly just used for compositing stuff over live action footage. So an easy way to visualize all of these is we can actually demo them here in the viewport. Uh, this is because I'm using 2.81, it's currently in beta, um, but this is a new feature for 2.81 and it's a very handy feature. If we go into our rendered mode here in the viewport, um, and then if you go into the drop down menu next to this um, shading settings, you've got this here where it says render pass and you can select where it says combine and now you can actually look at each individual render pass. So let's start off with Diffuse Direct. So in this pass, you'll notice that there's no texture information because in the Diffuse Direct and Indirect, all they contain is the lighting information. So we've got light coming from the left. There's a bit of a warm color to it. There's a bit of light coming from the right, which has got a bit of a blue. And there's some light coming off of this little red sphere here because it's uh, an emission object. You'll also notice that there's no bounce light going on here. And that's because this is the diffuse direct pass, which means it's only the light coming directly from a light or an emissive object. So let's now have a look at the diffuse indirect pass. And as you can see, this is all the bounce light that's in the scene. Uh, and again, everything is still black and white, but you can see a lot of green uh, coming off of here because this sphere here is green. So this is all of the kind of bounce light coming off of this sphere. And then finally in the diffuse section, we have diffuse color. And as you can see, this just has the raw color for each one of the objects without any shading information. And the cool thing about Blender render passes is they all follow this same methodology. So if we go into the glossy, for instance, you'll notice we have the same thing. We have glossy direct, glossy indirect and glossy color. And they are the same thing. So glossy direct is just the first direct reflection of each light in your scene or each emissive object, as you can see in the case of the red glowing sphere that we have here. And so while glossy direct is mostly your light reflections, glossy indirect is pretty much everything else. So all of the reflections of all of your objects in the scene and having them you know, reflect off of each other and so on. And then glossy color, most of the time it's gonna be white for all of your objects, except if they have transparency. And to, in this example scene, just to keep things simple, we don't have tra transmission or subsurface or volumetrics. Um, I'd encourage you to go and check those out for yourself. Um, but again, like I said, they all kind of follow the same principle. So what we do with the diffuse and glossy passes, um, you'll be able to do with all of the other passes. 
So let's get these into compositing, have a bit of a play. So for this example, we're just going to enable the diffuse passes here and the glossy passes. Uh, now the other pass we're going to want is our emission pass because we have our little uh, red glowing ball here. And we also want the cryptomat pass. And if you haven't used this before, it's awesome. Um, and I'll show you how to use it and sort of what sort of stuff you're going to use it for as well. But definitely this is like number one awesome pass to enable. And now let's switch into the compositing tab. Now if you download the file from the comments to follow along, the compositing tab will be set up like this. This is the fa my favorite way of setting up the compositor. Um, but essentially you just kind of make a new view, split the top views so that you have a viewer node set up on the left side and a render result set up on the right side. And then we're just going to hit F12 and get a render going. I've also disabled the pop-up render view in this file. Um, in 2.81, it's actually a preference. And so you have to go into your preferences here uh, into interface, temporary windows. And then you have this render in it defaults to new window, um, but you set it to keep user interface. And because we have a render view set up already here, um, we don't need that extra window kind of popping up in our face all the time. So here's our render, it's all good to go. So we have our render layers node here. If we control shift click with the uh, node wrangler enabled, which you should always have enabled, each time you click on it, it'll cycle through all of the different outputs that we have here. So here's our diffuse, diffuse direct, here's our diffuse indirect, uh, diffuse color and so on. You can also control shift click on the outputs themselves directly if you want to just view one in particular rather than having to like click all the way through them. So let's do a bit of a node wrangling ourselves here. Um, I'm going to just push shift H and that will just hide the render preview here um, just to make things a little bit easier. You can also hold down control and right mouse button drag across any link that you want to disconnect. That's a very handy thing. I think that works in all the node editors. So let's start with the diffuse here. So we have a diffuse direct, diffuse indirect and diffuse color are these three inputs here or three outputs rather. So if you go shift A, I like to right click this search and assign a shortcut. We'll use control shift A as a hotkey for search. And so then anytime we're in a node editor, we can just do control shift A and type what we want. Uh, in this case, we're gonna grab a mix node and drop it down there with enter. And so then we take our diffuse direct pass and our diffuse indirect pass and we're gonna plug them into the mix node like this. And then we're gonna make this mix node an add node. And if I control space back out here, and control shift click on this add node, we now have a diffuse direct and our diffuse indirect combined. So that was diffuse direct, that was diffuse indirect, and that's our total kind of a diffuse pass. Now let's control space to make this big again. Um, and I like to just fold these away because we don't really need to see all those settings at the moment. Now, if we shift D and duplicate this add node and then unfold it again, and we're gonna make this one multiply. And if we drop that over here, over the top of this connection here, you'll see it kind of highlight in a brighter color. And that will connect it in between the add and our output. And now we're just gonna take our diffuse color and plug it into the second input on this multiply. And now if we go back out, control shift, click on the multiply, this is purely our diffuse shading with our object colors incorporated and object textures. So again, I'm gonna just roll this multiply up here. And like I said, the, all the other passes follow these exact same principles. So we can simply just select both of these nodes, shift D duplicate, and then we're just gonna say gloss direct into that top input, gloss indirect into the bottom one, and then gloss color goes into the bottom of the multiply. And now if we shift click that multiply, we can see it's got our specular highlights, our reflections, and they're all combined together properly. So to combine your diffuse and your glossy and all the other passes you might use, you use another add node. So we're just gonna shift D to duplicate this add node. And then we'll drag this into here, this into here. So if you shift click control on the add, you can now see we've got something that's looking pretty close to our beauty pass, our main render. The one thing you will notice that is missing is this sphere here is black. And that's because it's part of our emission pass here. Now the emission pass, because it's just a single pass by itself, it's super simple to add it in. All we need to do is another add node, plug that in here, 
plug this guy in here. And then if we shift click that add node, and now we have a perfect copy of our main render. But there is one problem that you'll start to notice, and that is that this here is gonna get real messy real quick. And especially if you have like transmission and subsurface and have all of those kind of combined, you'll end up with something that looks like this, right? This is gonna be very hard to edit because the whole point of doing these passes is to be able to tweak things within those passes. And you're just gonna end up with like a crazy mess. So what I like to do is you can take these render layers and just shift D and duplicate it. And so then you can use this to, to kind of organize your composite a bit better. Um, so you might have, we'll have this top section here could be our diffuse. Um, and then we can just disconnect all of these with the control right drag, disconnect that one. And then we can drag these down here and then just hook them back up into our glossy. And then if we zoom out a bit here, we're going to keep these add nodes that combine the passes kind of separate. And say we want to do another section here for emission, say, for instance. So let's just shift D, duplicate this again, um, and then disconnect our emission here. And we'll plug that in in a second. So to visually kind of separate these areas, we can select the nodes. For instance, we'll select all of the diffuse nodes here and press Control J. And this will add a frame around uh, those nodes. And then you can push F2 with that frame selected and give it a name, diffuse. And if you like, you can even go over to the right here, click on the color and give it a color. And the cool thing about this is now you can just drag that frame and it'll keep all of the nodes connected. And I'm just gonna disconnect the composite here for a second. And so let's do that for here. Control J, F2, glossy, change of color, make it oh, pink. And then let's hook these back up. So we have our glossy and our diffuse being added together. And then we can just pull this kind of over here, add our emission in here. So this is looking a lot more readable and nice and neat. Now I'm just gonna hook in our final output into our composite node here. So all that's all real cool, but now what? What do we use this for? Uh, well, let's have a quick look at a quick example. So say you've got this middle sphere here and you wanna change the color of it. And of course you could just mat it out in compositing and change the color. But because the lights are colored as well as the surface of the object, uh, it would be a little bit of a little finicky to kind of try and tweak the color of that object without affecting the color of the lights and you know to make it look like fully realistic like it had come from the original render. And so I'll show you how we can change just the diffuse component uh, without affecting the actual lighting information. So if we go over here to our diffuse section, I'm going to use that control shift a shortcut we made before and add another mix node. And if you drop it in over this border, it will become part of this border. And so the, because we don't want to actually affect our shading information, which is these two passes, diffuse direct and diffuse indirect, what we want to actually affect is the color of the objects themselves. Um, and so what we'll do is I'm going to drop this mix node in between our the connection between our diffuse color and where it gets combined with the lighting information in this multiplier here. And what we're gonna do is just change the mix node to a multiply node again. And of course you could use any kind of color manipulation node that you want here, um, but just for this example, the multiply is gonna be kind of the easiest to visualize. So to change the color, and we'll just disconnect this viewer node here. Um, to change the color here, we can just change this uh, second color swatch in the multiply node and let's make it something like a, this like an orange color here like that. You'll notice of course because we don't actually have this a mat for this object uh, this color change is affecting the whole image here so we can sh control shift click the multiply and see the effect of it versus that diffuse color here. But if you have a look here in the composite view uh, the color of our lights hasn't changed. We've still got a nice red reflection from the ball. There's still this kind of blue reflection from this light over here. Um, so this would be a little bit difficult to achieve with just a straight up composite without the render passes. And so, so to mat out just this ball, this is where that crypto mat pass comes in. And we're just gonna shove everything over a little bit here. And then Control Shift A, type in crypto mat, 
drop that down here. Try and make sure it doesn't actually uh, sit on top of any of these connections when you drop it in. And we might just control space here and do a bit of node wrangling. So pull all this stuff up out of the way. Okay, and now our crypto mat, we have to plug in, we have this crypto object here, these three passes. Um, ignore the numbers because the numbers don't line up here. Um, you just have to connect them in order. So zero into zero, two into one, four into two. I don't know why the numbers don't line up, whatever. Let's also then drop in our image from the top in, uh, connection here into our crypto mat. And then to select which object we want to mat for, we have to control shift and click on the pick output of our crypto mat. So that will put, uh, put that into our viewer node here. And then you simply just need to pick this add button here on the crypto mat node and select the object that you want in this view here. So we'll pick this middle sphere and then if you control shift click on the mat, you'll see that that's given us a mat for just this sphere. And crypto mat's awesome because it doesn't matter if there's like depth of field or motion blur, you can still get a proper mat with whatever like motion blur and softness and stuff uh, incorporated into the mat. So it's a, it's a super handy one. And even if you don't ever use any of these other uh, light passes, I would definitely recommend just turning on crypto mat pretty much all the time. And so now let's just take our mat output from the crypto mat and plug that into the factor of our multiplier here that's changing the color. And I might just disconnect our viewer again. And now we can see that that color adjustment just happens on that sphere. And like I said, it doesn't matter what color you change it to, it won't affect the lighting, it's just affecting the color of the object. Now there's a couple of gotchas, of course. Um, you will notice that your reflections here obviously don't take on any of this color information. So there's still kind of a reflection of a white ball in here. There's still a reflection of a white sphere in here. But again, having, the, having these passes, like for instance, your glossy indirect, will make it a lot easier to get in there and you could just probably roto those out and change the colors. Um, maybe eventually one day Blender will have mats for reflection rays and stuff like that. A couple other renderers have that kind of stuff like V-Ray, but um, in the meantime, this is what you have to do. And so one last thing we'll do is, you know, we've got this little red ball here. Let's uh, give it a bit of a glow. Find your, your render layers here where you've got the emission here and you can just do something like add a glare, drop it on top. Uh, don't use the streaks one, use like fog glow or something like that. So rather than having to try and mess around with this threshold uh, to isolate just kind of the bright parts of the image, um, this emit pass makes it a little bit easier to kind of just isolate the objects that are emitting light and just add glows or do whatever you want to those. So that's it guys, hope you find this useful next time you're doing a bit of rendering. I know, like I said before, for me it's helped me so many times, like really save my ass on a project when you just need to do like a simple little tweak with the passes and uh, to get it out the door. So hit that like button if you like the video. If you're new to the channel, go have a look around, check it out. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and then I'll see you in the next video.